Good afternoon everyone, this is Sir Franz and this will be our short lecture on the respiratory chain or the electron transport chain. All of the reducing equivalents that are produced by the different catabolic pathways in the body involving reduced NAD and reduced FAD enter the electron transport chain. Eventually, the energy that they carry will be funneled into adenosine triphosphate. So we will now begin our lesson on how that happens. First, let us take a quick look at the anatomy of the mitochondrion. So the mitochondrion is a small organelle and it's double membrane. And it has a liquid inner portion called the mitochondrial matrix. So if we will be taking a closer look at the walls of the mitochondrion, it will look like this. For orientation, the outermost portion is the cytoplasm. You have the outer membrane, which is made up of a lipid bilayer. Again, this is a phospholipid whose structure we will learn in later lessons. But suffice to say that this is one fatty acid and this is its polar head, which orients with the water portion of the cytoplasm. And this is its nonpolar tail, which orients with the other nonpolar tail of the lipid bilayer. So you have here an orientation of polar, nonpolar, and then polar. The other polar side orients with the liquid in the intermembrane space. The intermembrane space is important. Because this is where the chemiosmotic or electrochemical gradient that is produced by hydrogen occurs. Here you have the inner membrane, which is the similar structure with the outer membrane, but it is more impermeable. The outer membrane is permeable to a lot of substances, while the inner membrane is tightly selective of what passes through it and that the substances that are able to pass through the inner membrane have to go to channels to be able to cross the inner membrane. Then lastly, you have here the mitochondrial matrix, which is the liquid portion of the mitochondrion. You have to understand that the Krebs cycle also occurs here in the mitochondrial matrix, and therefore the products of the Krebs cycle including the reducing equivalents, accumulate here in this uh, mitochondrial matrix. So, let us now continue our discussion. Through the Krebs cycle and the different catabolic pathways in the body, most of them happen in the mitochondrial matrix and they produce reducing equivalents, such as NADH. The reduced NAD or NADH then interacts with complex number 1, which is also called the NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase. So in complex 1, the reduced NAD will be oxidized back to NAD and the ubiquinone will be reduced. Remember that oxidation reduction reactions are coupled reactions. When one is oxidized, the other is reduced. When NAD is oxidized, in complex 1, ubiquinone is reduced. Okay. So, as NAD is oxidized, the electrons are carried by iron proteins in complex number 1 and eventually Together with the hydrogen proton, they will be expelled into the intermembrane space. And so as NAD is oxidized, four hydrogen atoms enter the intermembrane space, making this more positive and the mitochondrial matrix less positive or more negative, making the intermembrane space more acidic because of the higher presence of 
protons. Next, the electrons that have been transferred to ubiquinone then couple with coenzyme Q, which is an electron carrier, which finally transfers the electrons to complex number 3. Complex number 3 is called the ubiquinone cytochrome C oxidoreductase. And similarly, the coenzyme Q or ubiquinone is oxidized while cytochrome C is reduced. And as the oxidation reduction occurs, another four hydrogen atoms or ions are transported from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space. Again, making the intermembrane space more positive, the mitochondrial matrix more negative or less positive, and the intermembrane space more acidic because of the higher number of protons. Complex number 3 will then transfer its electrons to complex number 4 through cytochrome C, which was previously reduced. Now cytochrome C transfers its electrons to complex number 4, and complex number 4 then catalyzes as the enzyme the oxidation of cytochrome C with the final reduction of molecular oxygen. So cytochrome C is oxidized and molecular oxygen is reduced. So that after oxygen receives the electrons together with the hydrogen atoms that are present here in the mitochondrial matrix, oxygen is finally reduced to water. And therefore, oxygen is the final electron acceptor, and water is the product of the reduction of molecular oxygen. But again, because this is an energy-producing process, oxidation reduction, energy is then taken up by complex number 4, for it to be able to pump into the intermembrane space another two hydrogen ions, making again the intermembrane space more positive, the mitochondrial matrix more negative, and the intermembrane space more acidic. So that is the pathway that occurs in the oxidation reduction of NADH. But remember that in the Krebs cycle, we have the oxidation of succinate via succinate dehydrogenase, which produces the reducing equivalent FADH2, or reduced FAD. Remember that succinate dehydrogenase is unique because, aside from it being an enzyme in the Krebs cycle, it is also directly embedded, the enzyme, is directly embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And so, as succinate is oxidized, FADH2 is reduced. FADH2 now directly transfers the electrons through oxidation, again into CoQ, and then transferring it to cytochrome um, C, through CoQ, cytochrome C, oxidoreductase, or ubiquinone, cytochrome C, oxidoreductase, that's complex 3, and again, to complex 4, down to oxygen. So let's recapitulate. For NADH, you have complex 1, complex 3, and complex 4. For FADH2, or reduced FAD, complex 2, complex 3, and then complex 4. But at the end of the day, oxygen will be the final electron acceptor. What is now the purpose of generating an acidic intermembrane space and a very positive intermembrane space? By doing so, we are creating a voltage difference between the mitochondrial matrix and the intermembrane space. Again, the mitochondrial matrix is very negative and the intermembrane space is very positive. 
because the inner membrane is impermeable to these protons, there will be high potential energy in the intermembrane space. That energy wanting to flow into the mitochondrial matrix to neutralize the charge. That is the electric potential. But remember, these are also protons, and therefore these are particles. And therefore, you, al you also have a concentration gradient. High amount of proton in the intermembrane space, lesser amount in the mitochondrial matrix. You will be funneling all of that potential energy through ATP synthase, or complex number 5. Now, the protons that have accumulated in the intermembrane space will then pass through ATP synthase, and the energy that they carry through the gradient, electrochemical gradient, will be transferred into the enzyme ATP synthase which produces adenosine triphosphate through a process known as rotational catalysis. So in rotational catalysis, as the proton enters ATP synthase, a segment of ATP synthase will rotate. And as that segment rotates, it will bring closer a molecule of adenosine diphosphate and inorganic pyrophosphate closer to one another so that they fuse and capture the energy through adenosine triphosphate, which will now be the end product. And so through this pathway, which is the respiratory chain, we have understood how the reducing equivalence produced by the different catabolic reactions eventually power the production of a gradient which when allowed to pass through ATP synthase produces a lot of ATP. Now, this is the same um, respiratory chain but this is uh, specific for NADH. Or reduced NAD. This image, although a little bit overwhelming, emphasizes that we have certain substances that inhibit particular ion channels or members or complexes of the respiratory chain. Rotenone is a particular poison that inhibits complex number one. So, the reaction catalyzed by complex number 1, which is the oxidation of reduced NAD into ubiquinone, is inhibited. Antimycin inhibits complex number 3. And therefore, the oxidation of reduced ubiquinone and the subsequent reduction of cytochrome C is inhibited by antimycin A. Cyanide, which is a very familiar poison, inhibits complex number 4. Complex number 4, if you will remember, catalyzes the reduction of molecular oxygen partnered with the oxidation of cytochrome C. And therefore, there will be no oxidation of cytochrome C and no production of water. But eventually, because this is inhibited, cytochrome C accumulates, ubiquinone accumulates, and NADH accumulates because there is no forward transfer of electrons. And therefore, this will also arrest the respiratory chain. Oligomycin is a particular antibiotic that also acts as a poison of ATP synthase or complex number 5. Therefore, there will, no, there will not be any production of adenosine triphosphate.
This protein right here is the antiporter for adenosine diphosphate and adenosine triphosphate. This antiporter allows the ATP that is produced in the mitochondrial matrix to exit the mitochondrion and the ADP that is present in the intermembrane space to enter the mitochondrial matrix so that it can be transformed into ATP. By giving boncrechic acid, this antiporter will be inhibited and therefore the levels of ATP will also go down because there will not be any substrate which is ADP that is able to enter the mitochondrial matrix. So that will be all. I hope you learned a lot about the respiratory chain. Thank you for listening.